Ooh, what's up people, Dr. Wolf is right here. I wanna make this opening really, really quick because I know I have a massive feeling that this video is gonna be around about half an hour long. So it's gonna be a long live recording for you guys to watch it because you guys voted for it. My top 10 favorite YouTubers of all time. Now, I'm gonna tell you the rules really, really quick. The YouTubers that I'm picking have to be that I have subscribed to him. So I can't go ahead and just pick somebody that I've not subscribed. So there won't be any PewDiePie and there won't be T-Series, okay? So you get that understood. They have to be people that I do not know as an actual friend. So I can't pick Simply Calm TV, I can't pick Level 3 Calm, I can't pick CJ, I can't pick Ryan, and I can't pick MM. And also as well, it cannot be me. You don't, of course it cannot be me because I'm a YouTuber myself and hell it, you can't subscribe to yourself. Come on, you can't. Unless you have another account, but I'm not that cheapskate. Anyhow, I have over 150 YouTubers I've subscribed to, so I had to riddle them all down to number 10. So without further ado, let's get this started. Let's start off with number 10. Number 10, I had to go with the one I followed first because he was always super funny right from the beginning all the way up to the end. This has to go to Psychedelic Snake. Now, his real name is Lee Baker. He's British, just like me, but the content he gave every single day was just pure gold. He's a small YouTuber. He's not even got 100,000 subscribers yet, not even close. But he did games like Resident Evil 4, the Persona series, he did Kingdom Hearts, he did Fatal Frame, he did so many video games and every single one is pure gold. Now, the main thing why he's not number one or even nine or even higher now is that the main videos that he's uploading recently have all been live streams and as you guys know me with live streams, if I miss them, I miss him. Even though he uploads them on YouTube very, very later on, it's not feeling right because th the main videos that I liked watching him is when he was not showing his face. It was just literally just gameplay with his voice. It was just so freaking good. But now with he's making better money, he's now becoming a father, he has to go ahead and do other new things, which is fantastic, I think. But... The live streams nowadays have been slightly running down a little bit. I still support him every single day because I find him such a freaking hell of a ride to have a laugh with. And I'd love to have a compilation with him. But I have to go ahead and say he has to be number 10. Number nine had to go to Sound Like Pizza. Now, a lot of you may not even know who Sound Like Pizza is. To be honest, right now, he, like again, he's actually starting to become a rising star right now, and I find him super, super hilarious. Sound Like Pizza, we actually, we don't, we don't even really know his real name, but the only thing we know is from Australia, of course, because there's a lot of massive stars coming from Australia, but how he became super famous on YouTube now and why I started watching him is because he finally decided to do let's plays in online parties on like GTA, Red Dead Redemption, um, Fortnite, even though you guys know I hate Fortnite, but he made it super super funny and entertaining because besides doing that, he was a voice actor, he voice acts different type of people. He did the Drill Sergeant, he does Thanos, he does Rick and Morty, he does Kenya Rest, he does um, Arthur Morgan, he does Borat, which is one of his recent videos. And every single time he does it, he not only makes me laugh, he makes the people laugh in the game, which is amazing because a lot of times they find him annoying, which some of his videos, you actually hear them and they get really annoyed. But every time when he says like a one-liner or a particular word, they're on the floor laughing and it's just ridiculously funny. And for a guy that has over 80 million views on YouTube and over 
I think he's got over a million subscribers right now. I'm sure of it. But literally, he's been super popular for a couple of months by now. And him working with another YouTuber called Azaz, which were pretty much both gaming personalities known for their original YouTube playthroughs. But when this started, it just flooded all over Facebook, all over Twitter, and of course on YouTube. And you may be thinking, why is he not a little bit higher? I pretty much miss him doing a lot of Arthur Morgan stuff at most, because that was the thing that made me laugh every single time. Of course, he's now doing things that I'm looking forward to right now, which is the Cold War stuff. I'm looking forward to that every single day when he gets when he uploads them. But recently, the Borat one literally has pretty much given me more and more hope that he's bringing back some good characters. Because at one point, he was wasn't even on the top ten. And when he released the Borat videos and a few more before that, it had to be done. I he had to go on the top ten. So pretty much, sound like pizza. Well done to you. You won my number nine spot. Do you want help or not, Dutch? Ah, I need a spare horse. This one will do. Come here. <laughs> 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 ah! Oh my God. English or Japanglish? Number eight had to go to abroad in Japan. Now, why is he on number eight? Well, first off, let me tell you a little bit about him. Abroad in Japan, the main character, the main person that you see right now, is known as Chris Broad, who is again British, but he lives in Japan nowadays. He lives in Sendai in Japan, which is awesome. I'm really wanting to go there myself. But why is he on the list? Why is he? bright my day up, why I find him hilarious and everything. It's just that he looks at things on what British people see when they go to Japan, but also what the Japanese see when they see a British person or American when they come to Japan. It's super hilarious because it's 100% true. And also what make this, makes his channel so freaking hilarious too is not only just him, Chris, it's also his friends. You have Natsuki, you have all the friends that he goes all the way through it. He has, I think, about two girls in his channel and another fella, but every single one of them has a different personality through how his journey on his channel. You have Natsuki who is a drinking, smoking, funny, communical, um, heavy metal rock band person. He likes The Clash, which I find hilarious too, because I actually love The Clash myself. Um, and then you have the girls who are mainly shy, but like to show them on what things could you can do and then you have another fella i'm trying to remember his name but i'm not very good at remembering it it's hard to pronounce um he's like a car freak he likes driving cars all the day long and he feels like he wants to be in top gear which is super hilarious because it's also a british show and the all also one thing about it though i also have to thank the guy myself because he helped me out that I was able to go to Japan properly on my own. I knew where to go. I knew what I wanted to do because I asked him a few questions a long time ago about um, where to go in Tokyo itself around Ginza and Roppongi. And he replied, which was amazing because some places that I went to was thanks to him. And... The one thing, though, anyway, you may be that, thinking, why he's not a higher? The There's not really a reason why he's any higher. The main surprise, thing, though, is because the other YouTubers secret. I think I watch a lot more of. But if if a broad Japan so uploaded every single day, you, damn right, they'll be, be way higher. But the content he gives is quality once again from quantity and literally i think he has a good amount of videos per week i think it's i think it's perfect and recently i've been watching his um abroad around japan um it was like the um it was like a drive um all around japan to go to um, mount fuji which i'm looking forward to because i'm on episode two and i'm looking forward to episode three 
but yeah, secrecy, I have to go for number eight, eight but abroad of Japan, of day, you Chris Broad, well done, you? you're now one number eight. To look for when you go into one of these incredible clubs. For lunch, I went to a noodle rack. Hello, can I have 20 cheeseburgers, please? <laughs> yep, number seven, TGF bro. Now these guys, once again, British. <laughs> now, I know what you lot of people are thinking. You're going to have all British YouTubers, aren't you? No, I'm not. Um, but to be honest though, these guys were like the new version of Jackass, Dirty Sanchez, the um, Hus... It's just literally just so many different type of celebrities back in the past that you couldn't get away with nowadays. But these guys tried the hardest to try and bring back the shock factor, the excitement, the laughter, just super, super funny. And they're just young lads, the young lads who thought, let's try and do some stunts, try and do some jokes. And literally after that, bang, they blew up like there was no tomorrow. J and Wamel, that's the two boys that you see right now, Jay worked at McDonald's in um, Birmingham, if I remember, and oh my god, literally, when I found that out, I thought, Jesus, this guy is freaking nuts, and Ramel, I don't actually have a clue what was, what was his job before this YouTube channel started, but these two are like best friends for life, they are just super, super funny. And Jay's girlfriend is even way more funny too when them lot are together. But also the rest of their friends in this channel, like um, Fat um, I keep remembering their names, Luke and um, Feeling, if I remember, Feeling. They were also quite funny as well, and also they have their own channels, but. This channel, TGFOs, made them massive themselves. And they just look, literally, watching their videos, they have literally nothing but fun, banter, and just absolute chaos. They've had police arrest them. They've had ambulances helping them out because they're on the verge of dying. They've had so many death threats by neighbours. They've destroyed cars, they've destroyed houses, they've destroyed microwaves, they've destroyed everything. They're well known in their own Morrisons by a... Is it Morrisons or... No, Tesco's. They're well known in Tesco's where they live. And literally there's an old guy there. He's on the YouTube channel as well. Oh my god, super, super funny. But you may be thinking though, why are they not higher up? Now the main reason is because of one thing and one thing only that made them go a little bit lower. It's because of the lockdown. Now I know what a lot of you people are thinking, the lockdown would drop anything. But this channel really hit hard because of the lockdown. Because they tried to do videos in a new house with everybody but they literally about 10 videos in I got super super bored because they were trying to do something like Big Brother and it failed in my eyes a lot of people liked it a lot of people found it funny but I didn't find any of it funny but when the lockdown started to ease up and they started doing other videos they came back with a massive full-blown force and it was just so freaking good so pretty much that's all I have to, we have to say about Jay Wimel TGF. Well done to you guys. If you don't like the video, you're childish. Anyway, let's get on to number six. Bro, what's the problem, man? What's up? I need more chocolate. I had to put these guys as number six, the freaking VR YouTubers. I had to put these all in one go because they all work together pretty much. You can call them the boys, but the main people, what they're called, you have Mully, you have Josh Dub, you have Rekid, you have Eddie VR, you have Juicy, and your narrator. Now, all of them pretty much do VR chat and VR games, but they are so funny when they are all together. 
they just work together trying to make little tiny skits in VR chat and it's just so freaking good, clever, and the people who are there randomly just playing the game for themselves and they see these guys, it's just heaven on earth. If I had my PC with VR chat, I would try and see these guys for myself, but sadly... It's not going to happen because I don't have a um, no, 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 Oculus Rift. I have another PS VR. But watching them though, every single time when I see a new video, they make me laugh. Like the Baby Yodas, you have um, Herbert the Pervert, you had their horror games, you had them in a bar fights. You had them try and do a little bit of uh, Minecraft a little bit, which was super funny in VR chat. It's just... They try and make people have so much joy with their little skits and they do it 110%. They are that good. So, that's why I have to really say for them. You may be thinking, why are they not higher? It's really the reason why the top five are the ones I watch every single day, every hour, every minute, every second when I can. So... Let's get into number five. Now, people, do not hurt me, please. There is a reason why he's not higher. Mr. Beast is my number five spot, halfway through the countdown. And oh, the guy is an absolute genius. He is amazing. Thanks to the bloody sponsors that he gets and the amount of money he gets, the guy, to me, I think he's an absolute angel when he what he does with that money. But sometimes he can be a little bit crude when it comes to his money, with his money. Because, like I said, everybody does it. Money talks. It doesn't sing and it doesn't walk. If you want the money, you do it. And the th people that they've done to get the, the money that he has is ridiculous. He had people bathing in cereal for about almost 48 hours. They had people bathing in slime, people standing still for 24 hours, staying in a circle for three days without sitting down, um, playing hide and seek for 60 grand, um, playing last one to stay in the island gets the island. It's just absolutely amazing. But what makes him such unique in my eyes is what he's done for so many people during the videos. You've had the circle game, which he helped out a homeless shelter, which provides food for the homeless. They literally bought everything pretty much in the shop for them and also given them $10,000 check for the charity, which was absolutely heartwarming. But also what... Another thing that was so heartwarming he's done, he's given homeless people a house to start their life over again, which they've got better. They've given people cars that they needed. They've given people who have nothing, everything that they wanted. He did everything, but also you have the fun videos that he's done, like this one, spending every ounce of money on a particular dish to see if it's worth it, including the $70,000 pizza, which I think is ridiculous not worth it but this is worth it the Sunday <laughs> but why is he not higher it's hard to say it though but there's other people I watch more often and like I said every single youtuber has a daily dose of videos and like I said when you got them you have them for life and I'm sure that mr. beast is a lot of your guys national treasure but the other four are like proper YouTube treasures in my eyes. Anyway, let's get into number four. I don't know, I'm distracted. You can't have the king of Five Nights at Freddy's without Markiplier. Number four, Markiplier. Now, I wanted him to be number three, but 
he just slightly missed it to get bronze. But the way he is on the list, well, what else can you say? It's Markiplier. You can't go wrong with him. He's better than my eye. In my eyes, he's better than PewDiePie. He's better than Jacksepticeye. He's better than any of them people. He's just super entertaining. He's super nice. Oh my god, he's like a YouTube idol. And literally, everything that he's done in the past, he's been so gracious about it. Even the fan videos that he's been sent, every single time, he's cried. And it's like, watching him cry makes me cry. It's just nuts. And the amount of money he spends on ch charities and everything, but... The main thing why though, his videos are so entertaining. His react, his rage crits, his jump scare games like the Five Nights at Freddy's and Five Nights at Fuckboys. You have the Quat games, you have the Mario games, you have uh, getting over it with Bennett Fordy. But the ones before that though, was his drunk Minecraft that got me watching his videos. And yeah, Minecraft got me something to watch him. But it was because of him being drunk with about two to three of his friends every time. It was just so good because it was like a 40 minute video and he had like over 50 videos of it. So it was like hours upon hours of absolute banter and laughters and it's just so freaking funny. But every single one of his videos is just pure gold because he puts everything into it. Whether he likes it or hates it. And you made me thinking, why is he not number three? It's because I had a feeling I had to put him down for because I've got th number three, or number two, and number one are the literally I watch him literally every single day, morning, noon, and night. With Markiplier, when he has a new video, I'll watch it about three times, and then I'll move on, and then maybe watch another old video. Now, like I said, old is better than new. So I watch a lot of his old videos still than his new ones. But either way, his new ones are still freaking hilarious. But like I said, this is one of his old videos, which I find super funny. <laughs> but anyhow, Markiplier is number four. He brights up my day every single day. His content's amazing. He impacted so many people in the... YouTube community no, no, and even no, though he had a very no, rough life to begin with with like his family and everything but no, that was a pretty much a stepping stone for him to become great and thank you Markiplier for making videos and thank you for making me smile in the in the darkest days thank you so much now let's move on to number three Number three had to go between two YouTubers who are godly when it comes to Pokemon pack openings. Leon Hart and Unlisted Leaf. Now they're both together, pretty much two of the different forms. But their pulls and their excitement and the amount of love they give to the community is immense. With, with Leon Hart, he has pretty much the godliest collection of old cards from the long time past but with his pulls are immense with his PSA grades his Beckett's and his freaking signed autograph illustrator card of Charizard first edition Shavlos one in the a million it's just absolute gold now why is he not number two and number one same thing with Unlisted Leaf is because there's so much they it's because it's pack openings. You can have a lot of excitement, but part of me as well is jealous. <laughs> because every time I see him pull such godly cards, it's like, that could have been me. But sadly, it's not. I try my hardest getting the best things. But that's just Lion Leon Hart. What about Unlisted Leaf? Now, with Unlisted Leaf, he's just like a child he's just so full of excitement and his plush collection the giant Pikachu the giant TNT from Crash Bandicoot it's just the guy is a pure 
Pokemon fan like all of us. Same thing with Leon Hart, but he has a lot of excitement. And for them both being from Australia, it's just such freaking harmony for both of them. And I th if I remember, I think Unlisted League started YouTube first. I'm not 100% sure. But right from the beginning, he was opening baller cards every time. And he's like, his catchphrase, um, holy meatballs on fire in my pants. It's just something so random. It was just such freaking class. And also, people making cards of him into Pokemon cards is freaking a lot of, um, a lot of humble appearances of like people want him to become the best they want him to be like such an absolute king of pokemon which i think a lot of people think he is because he went to the premiere of detective pikachu which nobody else did by the look of it and he was in the world championships including in the pictures and as a ref and also being an actual player that is amazing absolutely amazing and the collection that he has, because he's actually making a museum in his house, the things that he has that Leon Hart doesn't have is mad, super mad. But either way, Leon Hart, Unlisted Leaf, well done to you both. You get the bronze for together. But who's number two? Let's find out. And we are definitely opening up that ETB as well. I just feel like my luck is on. Hey, I'm Grumps. I'm not so grump. And we're the game Grumps. Oh, Lord Almighty. Yes. The silver game Grumps. These guys are so funny. And literally, they have people making 12 hour videos for people to go to sleep because their voices are so freaking so calming even though they get angry a lot of time and swearing and talk about like dick jokes and vagina jokes and everything like that their voices are so intoxicating it's just so good because when you hear the voice it's like you say you think literally thinking to yourself this is gonna be good and every single video they've made from like one-off games to actual franchise long let's plays like the Legend of Zeldas, the Sonics and all the rest of them. But the one-offs are like the one-offs. They are like, you'll never see them ever again. The one I do remember was when they were doing Dead, uh, Dead or Alive Volleyball when they went to the um, casino. And they were literally, 23, 23, 23, yeah, five! That's all right. <laughs> literally, it's just, the stuff they did do is just amazing. Aaron was mainly known for animation, because he was known for, um, uh, for a cartoon show from um, Newgrounds. It was Ego Raptor, which was just like super funny in the past and um, they he made the awesome series which was so freaking funny to begin with and then he started game group with game grumps with a few other people and then you had um ross who was just super energetic you had erin's girlfriend which was super funny and adorable and then you have dan who is just a hoot because he just given two shits on what he does to make Erwin's life a living hell but even though them two love each other like this like the house on fire they are such great friends and them two playing games together is just so funny because you have Erwin who always wants to win and then you have Dan who literally is there to screw him up it's just such a freaking hoot watching them every single day and making me laugh every day, making me cry of laughter, making me laugh with absolute joy. You may be thinking though, the way you're talking about them, they should be number one. Why are they not number one and why are they two? It's the main reason. 
Number one is something mainly dedicated to my heart because they worked so hard for it. But these two worked a lot, a lot hard too. But number one, they worked a lot harder to become what they are now. But to be honest, well done to Game Grunts. You got silver. Who's number one? Or meaning, who's number ones? See you then. Fuck, 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 fuck. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Alright lads, I think it's time we went to our first pub. Oh, it's, oh, right it's here! here. Oh, it's here! Oh, here we go! You can't go wrong with the side men. Now, a lot of you may be thinking I am cheating right now, but you may be thinking these lots should be on their own, but I thought, hell of it, they all deserve to be in one spot because the side men are the side men. You have Josh, you have Ethan, you have Vic Star123, you have Road to Shore, you have Mini Minter, you have KSI on GWT, you got to Toby. They're just absolute laughter together. Now, like I said, the Sidemen team up together to defeat their weaknesses because every single one of these YouTubers had a weakness, every single one of them, but when they were together, they became gods. They were super funny. They were energetic. Every single one of them had a different personality which counteracted with the other. And you may be thinking, how on earth are these such number ones? They all had different backgrounds as a child. The lot of them didn't really know each other. The only ones that knew each other mostly was KSI, aka JJ, and Simon, who is Miniminta, they were best friends for life in the beginning when they were small YouTubers. And then they all started meeting up together and formed the Sidemen. And the one thing that made them such absolute enjoyment is because of what they did during the lockdown. Now, this is another reason why I said that TGF Pro didn't do well in lockdown. These guys made lockdown absolute fun. Even though they couldn't do things that they wanted to do, they did something that nobody couldn't do. And that was make content 10 times funnier and 10 times better. Now, you may be thinking, why? How? They were in lockdown. They couldn't meet each other because there were seven of them. They were doing Zoom chats with like chats, doing mukbangs, they were doing um, calorie um, intakes in lockdown. It was just such immense chaos, but with the guidelines of the lockdown. And the things they've done now from the past, they've got better every single time. They never got bad. Because right at the beginning, you had like the standard little tiny games that they had as individual YouTubers. And then when they actually started to form the Sidemen, they started doing a little hide and seeks. Then they started doing a few little calorific games like to eat 10,000 calories in a day, lose 10,000 calories in a day. Um, literally how much you can weigh in 24 hours. It's just, they were such out there to try and make these games be entertaining and every single one of them made them entertaining. You had KSI who was a lazy, sleepy person. You had Ethan who was a giggling fool. You had Vickstar who was moaning because he kept because he didn't want to eat. You had Toby who was laid back. You had Simon who complained. You had Josh who was just normal as anything. And then you had Harry who just liked and sniffing things up. <laughs> I'm joking, okay? I do not know if that's true or not. But every single one of them, though, are literally a family. It's a family, pretty much. It's a family of boys who just like to have fun. And literally, I don't think that they'll give up this channel in at least another five years. No way, they're still going strong. I can see them carrying on for another seven to eight years. And I can't wait for what things are coming our way in a few weeks time. I can't wait. But I can say this, the Sidemen are my number one favorite YouTube channel of all time. I'd like to ask you guys though, who's your top 10? Let me know and ask me what, actually tell me this easily. 
Who's your top three favourite YouTubers of all time? And it's got to be a good thinking. And please tell me the reason why. And also, if you liked my picks, make sure you hit the like button. And also, hit the bell icon to get yourself notified when we're uploading and live streaming. And also, hit the subscribe button so we can hit 20k. So we can do the English version of Bakamitai. I'll see you guys next time. The people on this video see you guys for subscribing. And I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio! Why did you, you pop it like that? Why you popped it? Oh, Bob! No, how am I going to do it?